He said, I just don't even want to live. But I talk with him, I pray with him. I got my guitar out and I sang over him. He started singing the songs with me. I don't want to take for granted what you guys have been through, what you've seen, what you've had to keep secret, what you've done. I know you don't talk about it and you don't like to talk about it, but talk to him about it. Let him know he has your back. You served our country and you served it well. Still serving it in your walk with him. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much for that. My son, Dustin, is a veteran as well. Thank you, Dustin, if you're watching this. We've been talking in the past uh, few weeks about his yes, their yes, your yes, and my yes. And there's so many broad avenues that we could carry all this, this whole subject of our yes to him. But my emphasis today is in our yes to him, he gets all the glory. He gets all the glory. No matter whether your yes is behind the scenes and you're never seen at all from anyone. Or whether it's out in the open and you're seen by everyone. He gets all the glory. We have to know that he gets it all. That we don't get puffed up. In Mark 12, 38, if you have your Bibles, turn to Mark 12, 38 and 39. It says, in his teaching he was saying, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in their robes. And like respect and respectful greetings in the marketplace. He's talking about people who were puffed up in, 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 in their walk with him because of their status or their position. And they would walk inspecting someone to greet them with a greeting because of who they were. In a sense, they were trying to take his glory from him. And I want you to know this morning that he gets all the glory. We all go through times where we want some of it. You've been there in places that you've like, and it could be the smallest little incident that you're like, I want some of that. I want to get some of that glory for myself. I remember a time when I traveled with Pastor Todd Smith and we were going all over the United States and I would always sit in the very back of the churches that we went to and, and Pastor Todd, would he would text me, he would say, where are you at? And I'm like, I'm sitting in the back. He goes, well, get up front. And I would wait for him to call me. You know, I thought in my heart I had all that cleared up because I was doing what the scripture said is just stay in the back and wait until you're called to the front. Stay in this seat and wait till they call you to this seat. And we went to Dawsonville one, one week, and, uh, and we were there. And, and normally, um, Shelly and I, we go, and our name's on a seat there. And it's Pastor Jason and Shelly Abney, and, and it's usually in the same area. And, and we go there, and, and I you know, walked in to go to this, where we usually sit, and, and, and uh, there's no seat there. And I thought, okay, and that's cool. We'll just sit in the back. I just went directly to that. And then, then the enemy started speaking to me and saying, well, maybe they don't like you no more. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, he's stupid, but he says stuff like that to you. And, and if we believe it, we're stupid. But he said, maybe they don't like you no more. And then, then, then I'm like, well, I know they love me. But he kept speaking those things over me. And then as Pastor Todd would walk around during the prayer time, he walked around and all the way around. He'd walk around. And, and he passed, and, he, and, he, and I'm right there, and he's right here, and he just, he walks straight past me. And in my mind, I'm like, maybe they, maybe they don't like me anymore. 
And I know where he was at. He was in a state of mind of, 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 of prayer and worship, and he was with God. He was seeing his face and looking right through me. There's a lot of times in the message, I'll be, or in the morning, I will be here and I will look at you, but I'm really not looking at you. I'm looking through you. I'm looking at him. I'm thinking of him. I'm talking to him. So don't be offended at that because if I look through you and don't say hi to you, I probably didn't even see you. And so he walks around another time and he walks around again. And um, again, he didn't say anything to me. Normally he would, but this, this time everything was different. And I'm like, I'm like, I, I can't believe that to the devil. I'm like, I'm not going to. I mean, I'm having this conversation in worship time, in my prayer time with the enemy going, no, that can't be true. That can't be true. And Todd comes around the third time, and, uh, and he, just, he, looks, he looks over, and he sees me, and, he, and he, he, you can tell he snapped out of where he was. And he walked over to me. He said, hey, bro, man, I miss you. I love you. Thank you so much for being here. Can't wait to catch up after the service tonight. And, um, and then he went back into his other mode and walked around. And I said, see, he does love me. I told the enemy, I said, just get behind me. Leave me alone and get behind me. But I want you to know that there's sometimes that we, we think that we, we try to get some of that glory. And my seat wasn't there. Shelly and I's seat wasn't there. And we found out later someone actually took our seat. And they took our name tags down. And I don't even know, Pastor Karen don't even know what they did with them, but it, they took our name tags and they were sitting in our seat. She goes, I know I had you seats, but there's other people sitting in those seats. I'm like, just leave it, leave it alone. And, uh. But so they did have seeds for us. So there's just the enemy. But what it was, was he was, what, what Jessica Rose was talking about, he was tweaking my heart. Because maybe there was something in me that wanted that glory or wanted to get that spot so other people would see that Pastor Todd come up to me and he spoke to me and he said hi to me and maybe not them. So that was something that God was trying to show me and tweak in my life to where I get nothing. I get no glory just because I'm standing up here. I get nothing. Just because Jessica Rose come up here, she gets nothing. Just because Dyson comes up here and plays a guitar, he gets nothing. We get none of the glory. And if you want glory, I'm going to flash a few names on the, on the screen if you can flash those names through them names quickly. And if you, if it, there's two things that can happen with this right here, if we have those slides, I think we do. There's two things that can happen here. You can see your name and get puffed up because your name is on the screen, because your name is in the limelight. Or you can be, well, why did they pick those names? Why are those names up here and my name's not up here? Why did, why, did, why did they think of them and not think of me? If you battle with either one of those, if you battle with the, with, with the soon as your name, as soon as your name was pop, it popped up here, as soon as your name, if something inside of you is like lifted up, haughty, you need to be at the altar. You're dealing with that, a situation of wanting to hog the glory from God. If your name wasn't up here and you thought, why didn't they pick my name? It's because you want to hog the glory from God. You want to take something that's not yours and it's his. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you are behind the scenes. It doesn't matter whether you're behind the scenes and no one can see. Nobody can see that you are cleaning the bathrooms from week to week to week. That nobody can see that, that you're here cleaning the pool. Or that you're back teaching the children how to love Jesus. No one ever says thank you. Just keep pressing in. Just keep pressing on. Just keep doing what he's called you to do, whether you get the praise or whether you don't get the praise. And when you get the praise, you just turn it right back and give it to him. Because some people are going to Some people are going to come up to you, and they're going to tell you how amazing you are. You have to learn how to take that in and control that with your emotions. You don't have to say, no, I'm not amazing. He is. But in your heart of hearts, that's what you say. You just say, thank you. 
it's very important that we tell people around us how valuable they are. It's very important that we tell our family how valuable they are. The people that you sit with, your husbands to your wives and wives to your husbands to your children, telling them constantly how valuable they are. And teaching them that when you say that they're valuable, that they don't have to puff it up. They just have to know it and believe it within themselves that that's who they are. Because God sees them that way. And in Matthew 1, 18 through 25, it's now, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as followed. His mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with a child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. See, he found out that she was pregnant. He thought, I don't want to do this. I'm just going to put her away. Thank God that the Holy Spirit come on the scene or the angel come on the scene and said, no, it's okay. Don't be afraid to take her as your wife for she is with child and the child is, being conce is conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son. And you, he gave him a job to do. You shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place, what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. It's in Isaiah 7, 14. It said, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took Mary as his wife. And he didn't lay with her until she had her son. In this scripture, it says that Joseph awoke from his sleep. I'm going to take that in the worldly term here. When you awake of who you are, when you come awake from who you are, and you realize that you are a child of God, when you finally wake up out of your dream world or out of your world of, of living your life your way and you realize, well, I've got a job to do. God has called me to do something. When you realize that, what is saying here, he woke up from his sleep, and that's what he probably was sleep, and the angel came to him. But I'm talking in the world, when you wake up from your sleep, thinking that everything is about you and everything has to be about you and your way or the highway, it, what he's saying is that, Wake up and say yes to what God has called you to do. Joseph woke up from his sleep and he did as the angel said. He didn't question it. He didn't ask what was going to happen. He didn't ask what was going to be in front of that yes. He just said yes. There were some tough times in front of that yes. Yes. Some places that Joseph probably never even planned on going and had to go or hiding. Didn't realize that was the man he was going to be. He wanted to get married and have a wife and have kids and be a carpenter like he was. But God had other plans. But you know, Joseph was not in the limelight, the limelight. Not mentioned very much. Matter of fact, I think when Jesus was 12 was the last time that he was mentioned because they, they lost him for three days. They lost the Savior for three days. But you got to understand the culture. You know, we have to keep an eye on our kids today. You don't know what's lurking around the corner. But back then, everyone protected everybody. Family was family was family. And if he was back three miles back, he was with some kind of family. He was with people they trusted. But he was actually in the temple preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, or the gospel. He was preaching the Old Testament, reading the word to the people there. 
So I want you to know this morning that your yes matters so much. Your yes is so valuable, it's so important. And I know you love to serve him. You love what you do. Maybe you're a mom, maybe you're a minister, maybe you're a leader, maybe you're all three. But sometimes, even in all those things that we do, we feel so unappreciated. How many of you moms have ever felt unappreciated when no one thanks you for hands already came up and uh, we, I didn't even say nothing yet? Um, but, <laughs> Guys, you better get on, on the ball. I mean, their hands like flew up, and I hadn't even said anything. That's funny. That is. I mean, like, you folded clothes, and no one said thank you for folding the clothes. You cleaned the clothes, and no, I, I tell Shelly thank you for um, cleaning all my clothes, my dirty socks and stuff, and I tell her thank you for doing that. Probably not enough. Is it enough? You need more? You, you don't, you do, you don't. Listen, you might feel unappreciated at times, but what you need to know, um, that you, I wanted you to know that you're not alone. Listen, in Colossians it says this, Colossians 3.23 it says, whatever you do, do it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Moms, dads, when you're doing these things, do it with all your heart as you're working for the Lord and not for men. The next verse goes on to say, because you know you receive inheritance from the Lord as your reward and is the Lord Christ Jesus as your service. It's the Lord Christ Jesus that you are serving. He sees it when you pick up the laundry. He sees it when you go out in front of the church and you pick up a piece of trash off the ground. He sees those things. Nobody else might not see those things, but he sees those things. There are times that I'm out there and I'm like, I'm just tired of picking the trash up. There's so much trash because it blows right here and it stops in front of the place. I'm like, can someone come out here and pick somebody's trash up? It blows from everywhere and just dumps right here. It used to dump over at the other church. Now it dumps up here. And I asked the Lord about that, and, he, and I learned to ask him about that. I said, Lord, why, why does all this trash get dumped in front of the church here? He says, because you'll take in everyone, everything and everyone that no one else will. That's who we are. So he sees everything that you do. He sees moms, dads, when you're on your knees and you're praying and you're calling out to him. Or someone is every morning you wake up and you're doing a good deed for someone else. He sees those things. Remember, he's the one you're serving. In all that you do, he is the one you're serving. And he sees you. In Isaiah 42, 8, it says, I am the Lord. It is my name. I will not give my glory to anyone. Usually when I see that verse, I think about um, idols. But he's saying here, I will not share my glory with anyone. And that includes you, and that includes me. We get none of it. He will not share it. He does not want to share it. So if you are someone who is trying to hog the glory of God, stop. If you're mad because someone didn't pat you on the back, stop being mad. You got an arm, pat yourself on the back, I guess. We have to stop with these things that we get so offended by these petty things that, that we did this and no one saw it or no one said anything about it. It's time for us to grow up. Really, it is time for us to grow up. And, and it's okay to tell someone, thank you, it's okay. But how we receive it and how we take it out and how we, it's, it's a whole different thing. And maybe... This year, you have thrown a pity party. 
Anybody ever throw a pity party for yourself? I have. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I have thrown pity parties. Shelly will tell you. She throws them too. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to rush through this, and I don't want to. So I got so much information here. Listen. Jessica Rose, you said, oh, well, it's great. She was just going through a growth period where, where a growth period where she was, you know, almost kind of being defiant to God, to what he wanted. And people would say, you know, almost to the point where there, there's possibly gossip. Maybe not intentionally, but it just happens about the pastor, or his vision, or the pastor's wife and her vision. Some of you might have did the same thing. Listen, the more time you spend on not, the more time you spend on thinking, why didn't I get a thank you, or why didn't I get this or that because I did this and that, if you could turn that around and start and in, in what you're lacking, start applying it to other people. So if you're not getting the thank yous, just start thanking everybody for everything they do. Start thanking the teachers for teaching the kids. Start thanking the ones who are cooking for you. Start thanking the ones who are cleaning things for you. If you're not getting it, just give it out. Watch how that blesses you more than getting it. I promise you it will. It will bless you more than getting it. Just like I love to give gifts. I like to buy my own gifts, but I love to give gifts. I don't like people buying gifts for me because um, usually they buy me something I don't want. I'm just being honest with you. If you buy me some gold or silver, I love it. Cash, gold, silver. I'm just telling you, I'll take it back or I'll re-gift it. I don't know. That's why I buy my own. That sounds bad, but I mean, I just, you know, Bill Johnson said, um, hey, if, if someone likes a green shirt and you buy them a red shirt, why would you buy them a red shirt? They like green. Don't buy him a red shirt. Buy him a green shirt. And uh, so, anyhow, the point of the message today is, I didn't get the, all the way through it, is, is we get no glory. So tweak yourselves when you feel like you should get a thank you or a pat on the back. And maybe, maybe you should for what you did. But if it doesn't happen, it's okay. It's okay to just keep doing what you're doing because he sees it. He sees it. That's the only one that needs to see because you're going to get a reward from him. He's going to bless you. He's going to reward you. He's going to give you everything that you ever need. He's going to reward you. We don't have to have things from men. We don't have to have things in this world, but we do need that. I'm going to ask you this morning, would you be okay? Let's stand. Would you be okay if you served him your whole life and no one said thank you? Would you be okay with waiting on those words, well done, from him? Well done. That's what he promises you. When you serve him, he's going he's gonna to welcome you. And when he stands there, he's going to welcome you. He's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord. And when you enter into that, I know there's going to be a multitude of people lined up welcoming you, thanking you, thanking you for all that you did. Some are going to be ones you ministered to, and they went on before you. And it's going to be, they're going to be, thank you for giving to the Lord. For I am a life that was changed. Thank you. So if we get nothing here, he's got it for you on the other side. In your prayer life, he's got it for you. In your private time with him, he's got it for you. I've sit and soaked with God so much that I hear him saying, man, I am so proud of you. What a great job. I'm like, Lord, I don't feel like I'm doing anything right. No, you're doing good. You're doing good. And where you're not, I'll teach you, and we'll fix it, and we'll move on. If people get offended, they get offended. 
but we're going to move on and stay holy, stay wholesome. We're not going to be offended by their offense. And then everybody's building fences and no one can see anybody because we all got fences up around each other. Tear them down. See what's around you. Spire heads. So when I flash those names up there, if 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 any if you got a feeling of wow, why wasn't my name up there? Or if your name was up there and you got this haughty feeling of wow, my name was up there, they chose me. And that I'm I'm it's just the smallest little thing in you, if it was there, that's an open door, that's a crack in the door that's open that the enemy can come and he can just wreak havoc in your life with that one little crack. So we're just going to pray. I've got my leaders that are going to come up, Randy and Carlene and uh, um, David and Ashley. Uh, Randy needs prayer. You pray for him while you're up here with him. So let him pray for you, and then you pray back for him. Um, And so we'll just have these four up here. Um, Rosie and Theo come up here and Jessica and Jessica Rose and Kurt come up here as well that'd be enough we got eight people if there are times that you feel like that you want something that is not for you or not yours just come and pray and get rid of it. This is the thing. What We're scared to get rid of the things that we're holding on to. And God wants you to have freedom in all these areas. All these areas. All these areas. When, you, when your wives feel like you don't get enough admiration from your husbands, come and pray about it. Because this is the deal. If you're not getting enough admiration from your husband, I encourage you to live better for Christ. I encourage you to serve him better. I encourage you to live it out in front of your husbands. Husbands, live it out in front of your wives. Make the right choices. Close some of those doors that you've left open. Some of the places that there's cracks that the enemy's going to come in. He and he will come in. If there's a crack in the door or if there's something you've left the wedge in it so you can get back in it later, he will come in and invade that place. And the word of God says he will bring seven times with him of destruction. So let's be honest with one another. We're going to get rid of all pride today. We're going to get rid of all self today. We're going to give everything to him. Guys, what happened this morning in our worship time should be a norm. It should be a normal thing. It should be, I mean, I don't want it to be a faddish thing, or, but it should be a norm. We should be worshiping him in that way every time we come together and worship him. I know some people sit and worship and stand and worship. Some people cross their hands and worship, cross their arms. And, and I know there's all kinds of ways to worship, but I'm telling you what, that's the most reverent place is right there, being in that place. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, today for what you've done. Lord, thank you for the short message this morning of just giving you all the light and all the glory that we get none. In our yes to you, Lord, all of us have a yes for you, and you've had a yes for us. So in our yes, Lord, as we walk this yes out, even if we're behind the scenes and no one ever sees us, thank you. If we're out in the open and everybody sees us, thank you. Still, either way, you get nothing and we want nothing. So if you need to pray this morning, I'm just going to ask you to come up. Come up and pray. Ask the Lord to reveal things in you, expose things in you that you can fix. I guarantee all of you have stuff that needs fixed. We all do. Every morning I come in here, I pray that God will fix the things that are broken in me. Let's stay for five more minutes. Just five minutes. The restaurants are not going to close, I promise you. You got a microwave to heat the food up. It's getting cold. Five more minutes.
Between feet.